in other words, the, the sort of demons of the Cold War for people under 35, even under They didn't 40. live through the Cold War. They didn't live through McCarthy. You know, there's that movie that I never get it right. Trumpo, Trumbo, whatever that movie is. Well, it's about the Hollywood 10 and the McCarthy era, even though it was the house that he refused to testify. Well, I had a cousin, Paul Jericho, who actually I never met, but he's a cousin by blood, uh, who did a movie called Assault of the Earth. And he took all blacklisted people. But most people now are not aware of that time in the 50s. And his message of uh, taking on the billionaires, a political revolution from below, it's more than just a call for economic, more economic equality. It has a kind of more, I would say, even radical tone to it. And he even seems to be pushing it more in some of his rallies in New Hampshire. And it seems to be resonating here. And this is a state which generally goes for a little bit more of the mainstream candidate. Well, but he's a main native son. He's from the neighboring state of Vermont. He's well known in New Hampshire, has been for years. There's a lot of spillover between the two states. And so he is well known. Uh, but if I understand the polling correctly, up until even late November, it was neck and neck. And he starts to pull ahead. So it wasn't, I mean, I, 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 certainly the well-known factor something. The things that have really hurt Secretary Clinton are, one, that uh, her speeches and not being released and her being viewed as Wall Street. Uh, and the other thing, of course, the emails have hurt her, although I think that's ridiculous because, But more frankly, on the Republican side than the Democrat well, side. Well, I understand, but that seeps over. And, and thirdly, that she is seen, because of her husband, Bill Clinton, of more of a mainstream Democratic candidate. And I think the young people want something non-mainstream on both sides. Well, one of, one of the kind of controversies uh, in the television pundit land this morning and yesterday was uh, some statements by Gloria Stein. And I think she was on the Bill Maher show and also a quote from uh, Madeleine Albright. Now, let me ask my studio crew. I have to say, this is going live like this. We don't do it every day and we hope to pretty soon. But right now, this is all kind of new to us, so sometimes you're going to have to forgive us for some of the, as we get our technical stuff smooth. So let me ask, uh, guys, do, do we have the Gloria Steinem clip ready? Yes, let's, well, here it is. So I'll set it up a bit. Gloria Steinem's talking to Bill Maher, and essentially he's asking her about women voting for Hillary, except young women are actually voting for Bernie, and this is her response. Men right. tend to get more conservative because they gain power as they age, and women right. get more radical because they lose power wow. as they age. So, so, so it's, it's kind of not fair to measure most women by the standard of most men because they're going to get more activists as they grow older. And, and when you're young, you're thinking, you know, where are the boys? The boys are with Bernie or, you know. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> now, if I said that... <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, that's for Bernie, because that's where the boys no. are. So, uh, I'm not sure, entirely sure whether we got our whole tech act. Did you hear that? I didn't, but okay. that's okay. But, but you know, so essentially at the end, I she says... I think what she said is unfortunate, and I think she probably shouldn't have said it, and I think some of the younger voters who don't understand what Gloria Steinem did are going to say, who's this creature? You know, I'm, young people don't know the people that you and I grew up with. Well, I, I've heard some Sanders, young, young meaning late teens, early 20s, interviewed about that quote, and they do seem to understand who she is. And they, I've, I've heard them say, you know, we respect the, the, you know, the path they opened and all of this. On the other hand, I'm not stupid. And the, the quote I heard that was most interesting, a young woman, is, is a Sanders supporter, says, I will have many opportunities to vote for women. Sanders is a once-in-a-lifetime candidacy. What do you make of that? Well, maybe it is a once-in-a-lifetime candidacy, uh, but there may be other women that have come up. You know, I work in South Sudan, and some, one of the politicians said, oh, you will never have a woman president. I said, what are you talking about? Of course we will at some point. You know, who's to think that we would have ever had an African-American president? But we did. So I'm not so concerned about the women's issue. And it was also interesting that there's been a lot of racial issues in this country, and people don't remember that Barack Obama said, if you elect me as your president, you're not going to be able to do this on the you're going to have to still really deal with race relations. So it doesn't really matter if there's a woman president. They're still going to have to work on women's issues and the get pay gap and lots of other issues, glass ceiling, etc. Okay, let me ask again. I, is Jessica standing by? I do not have Jessica. Okay, well, pretty soon I'm hoping we'll have Jessica. She's going to be coming from a... Uh, she, 
Uh, okay, I'm being told our live feed from the Clinton rally is not working. Um, so, uh, well, let me ask you another question then. Do you think the, the I mean, one of the Trump cards, and I'm, I, 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 every time you say it, you have to say no pun intended. Right. So please, a blind check from now on. If I ever use the word Trump, I am not going to say no pun intended. We understand there's no pun intended. Um, do you think this card that the first woman president, woman president, it didn't really work all that well in Iowa. It certainly doesn't seem to be working in New Hampshire. And is this something that, as we get, go through the primary season, is kind of going to get old and wear out, and it really is going to become about who has an exciting vision? And does that mean the Sanders candidacy actually really starts to take on more steam nationally? I actually think it does. And I think it is because, again, uh, people, you know, they had this black president. They've had, uh, they have a woman running. It doesn't necessarily translate into votes. The vision and where America's at, I think, does translate. It has to do, even the Republicans are talking about raising income and that how important that is. So if you even have the Republicans doing that, that's that's a whole meme that isn't being really yeah, no, talked no, about. Yeah, nobody is campaigning, I'm for the rich. Not one person. Okay, um, I think, uh, let me talk to my guys here. Uh, are, can we run uh, Jessel's interviews with some Sanders and Clinton supporter? Yes. Okay, uh, so we're going to cut to Jess yesterday afternoon. Uh, Jessel Noor was out on the street and he was talking to some Sanders people. Maybe he's at a Sanders rally and, and also a Clinton supporter who went to the Sanders rally. Um, and Ellen's going to join us uh, later today and tomorrow. She'll come back and uh, next time we'll talk about I'm the Republicans. I mean, your neck of the woods. You're, in our, you're around the corner and then we'll talk about the Republicans Thank next. Thanks very much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Okay, we're going to roll to that clip. On Sunday, a crowd of over a thousand people packed a college